in the wake of Māori political independence, all of the nonsense with Spati Māori, and it, with all the discussions going on about whether we need to become a republic, whether or not we need a constitution, I think now's the time that we have a discussion about a constitution, what that would look like. Now, I'm no constitutional expert, okay? I don't know the exact way that a constitution is constructed. How would go about doing that? I'm sure everyone, every single constitution ever in Britain is different in some way, whether that's how it's formulated, how it's created, how it's voted on, how it's implemented, all of these things. Nonetheless, I think there is merit. There is merit to us implementing a written constitution rather than the uncodified constitution that we currently have made up of a range of different documents and, and so forth. Um, and I, I think this is reasonable and I think it's a discussion we need to have. Firstly, do we need to become a republic? Well, I think that's something that we could just vote for in the process of this. I really don't lean one way or the other. I do feel like there is a level of stability or a, a level of culture associated with being a constitutional monarchy as we currently are. Um, though I don't feel like there is anything really requiring us to retain that. And if the general sentiment is that we don't, then I'm fine with that. I'm okay with that. Um, and so that would be something that 100% in the process of creating a constitution that we vote on. And if it's voted that we don't retain um, our recognition of the monarch as the head of state and that we become a republic, then so be it. And that can literally be a key underlining factor in the constitution in it of itself. Now, of course, because of all of the stuff with the party Māori, and effectively you don't recognize the monarch, despite Te Tiriti Waitangi saying it, we don't have to regard Te Tiriti Waitangi in any way in this constitution whatsoever. We just don't. I mean, there is there is one element, one, one version of this we could make that does include it. wouldn't dramatically change it, but it would be far more contentious. But we don't need to include that at all. Um, and especially if the party Māori are going to go and make their own parliament, why would they care anyway? They're not going to be involved with our, our government. They're not going to be involved with our constitution. So why would they care? It doesn't matter. So, you know, there is no real reason in the current, in the current climate, um, especially with the way things are going, for us to include that at all. Um, if you disagree, I'd love, love to hear it. But I don't think we need to include that. And if we did, we would obviously be more likely to just say, hey, look, we want to acknowledge the right of this government to create laws and be elected by us. And we want to acknowledge the rights of all people in this country to have equality, right? Um, and, and of course, that for us to all have equal standing is probably the best way to say it. And, and so those, there are some principles that we can take. There are some um, ideas that we can take from Te Te Ritiwa Waitangi itself that we can implement in now in how we view um, each other in this country. That's always important. There's lessons to be learned in everything. But outside of that, we already know that the uncodified constitution we currently have made up of several different documents, pieces of legislation already, you know, includes things like the Human Rights Act, the Bill of Rights Act, and all these things. And that's important. But I think we don't regard the Human Rights Act as a constitutional piece of legislation, do we? I mean, most people probably don't even know that we have a constitution. Most people I talk to are unaware or they don't view a uncodified constitution as having the same standing as something like a written constitution. So I think that's a, another good reason to have one or to create one so we can take very very key parts from the human rights act from the bill of rights act and put those into our written constitution and have them constitutionally recognized very explicitly and say this is a constitutional right not just a human right not just a right recognized on the human rights or the bill of rights legislation it is a constitutional right that we as a people voted for explicitly so there's merit to that and, and that's the same for the range of different things that we could have involved and included within the Constitution itself. Anyway, that, that can go as far as electoral changes. I think in the, in the wake of um, a potential moving out of the kind of voting system that we have from the likes of the Party Māori and their supporters, that there would be need for a shake-up in our, in, our, in our parliamentary system anyway. I mean, would certainly... I think, I think now is the time to really consider getting rid of the Māori electorate seats, especially if Māori are going to have their own parliament somewhere. So we don't need those anymore. So if you're going to remove seven whole seats, then, I mean, now's the best time to make changes to how we elect people. And I think MMPs run its course. I, I noticed the... Yeah, I'm only 24, so forgive me, okay? MMP came in before I was born. First past the post is something whilst I've looked into a little bit um, and understood a little bit when I was learning about MMP. I didn't really understand it to the to the level that I thought I did. 
And as such, when I was explaining a couple of weeks ago that we should no longer have list MPs, I didn't quite realize that effectively I was just describing M uh, I was just describing first past the post. And I realized with that people, the reason why people wanted MMP was because of the, um, because it made, you know, the proportion of votes um, to seat ratio in parliament, you know, proportion, it made it proportionate, um, proportional representation, I believe is the term. However, of course, as I was explaining in the in a, in a video following following that, and it was just a you know just a reply to someone. I, I think gone are the times where we should start viewing proportional representation as something that's on a individual level. I think I think a community level suffices. Um, for me personally, I see a lot of merit in the system that the US uses, uh, and I and look, you, you may disagree with that. I mean, the US is a very very complex and messed up place. Um, and they are a very partisan place. But at the same time, I feel like the the pros of every single MP being elected by name to represent a certain community outweigh the cons of, you know, let's say 60% of the population voting for one party, but another party winning 60% of the actual, actual um, seats, right? Uh, and I think that's just a consequence. At the end of the day, I think it's more important that communities are whole represented than individuals. Because individuals, you don't know the true intentions of individuals. They may be self-centered. Uh, if the whole community is rallied behind a candidate for whatever reason, there is likely a reason for it. Be that just a inherent ideological trait of the community, be that a community is in desperate need of a particular um, of, of a particular thing that a that a politician is promising. There are reasons why communities will rally behind one candidate or another. And I think those should outweigh the whims of the individual, personally. Um, because ultimately, ultimately, politics is something that involves everyone. And if we view politics and approach politics from an individual perspective rather than a perspective where we come together and discuss what is best for our community and try and engage in, in, in discussion respectfully and, and get the best for all of us, then I think we're missing the point. I don't think we're actually getting the best results for everyone unless we're forced to actually lobby our own community to get the results that we want. You're forced to lobby. You're forced to engage with your community without ensuring next time around they, that they listen to you. You need to explain to them why it's beneficial for them to vote for the person you want them to vote for. Why it's beneficial for our community to elect this representative. It's about getting the results for the community because a stronger community is a stronger family. Stronger families have stronger individuals. Stronger individuals, on balance, just lead better lives. All of it works together to benefit the individual, but it's just rather than looking at it from an internal way, it's all external. And so I think stating that only proportional representation can only be you know can only be um, implemented on an individual basis rather than a community basis i think it's just very self-centered i think it kind of misses the point